Well, let's, let, me, let me ask you a related question. If, now, if you go back to that time between 1941 and 1945, I'm curious, when you wanted to get away from the war in your mind and give yourself a mental vacation, what was the number one thought? And I ask this because Gerald Ford used to say that when he needed to you know, try to calm down or get rid of stress or think of something that was calming to him uh, in the busyness of his, his life, that he loved to think back on Grand Rapids and his childhood in Grand Rapids. I'm just curious, did you, did you have a similar experience? Was there a thought that you came back to when you were serving overseas? Oh, there are so many, of course, you think back of your, your life, your family, and the business you were in, and, <clears throat> and, and the good times, and some of the bad times, and the uh, interesting times, being a newspaper man as I was. Having been a city editor of a daily newspaper, it was a uh, it was a life of its own in, the, in that particular time of my life and in that particular era. Uh, it was a a different a different world almost, you know. So yes, one can't can't get away from their backgrounds when there's their periods of stress, and I'm no different than anyone else. Um. I, I want to make sure we capture this, and since you just mentioned your work at the newspaper, but you, you've told me a couple of times that when you worked on the newspaper there at the Grand Rapids Herald as the city editor, you said that was the happiest period in your life. I, I, I think it was because uh, in, in a working sense and being involved in the, <clears throat> your daily life, one must remember at, at those particular times it was the beginning of many many events in Roosevelt administration. And uh, before we had the, the, the NRA and all the different things that went into it, it was not unusual for us to have to work 12 hours a day as a newspaper man, six days a week. And sometimes the city editor, because you wanted to be sure the Sunday paper got out correctly, you hit off a seven day a week if you had to do it. And we didn't think too much about it in those days. Uh, we didn't think too much of asking people to to work longer hours and to give an assignment and not worry about the number of hours or days it might take to finish the job, you know. Uh, and uh, they, there's no uh, people or people involved in an industry, I think, like the newspaper people are. Uh, in those days, anyway, it was uh, uh, newspaper men and women were. Um, were a, a dedicated breed in trying to bring about, I believe, some form of change of worse to better. And uh, whether it be a small item for picking up in the papers or a larger item, and uh, I, uh, I, I got, uh, I got every day something was new and something was different. And. Uh, you knew very well that you had to handle the paper and its news in a very correct way. Sometimes you could ruin the lives of people uh, if you didn't do it quite right. And, uh, and sometimes you could make great excitement out of things by mere headlines. And uh, I was very cautious and very aware of, of, of these factors in life because the, um, I remember we had at least one reporter who was, I think was one of the best there was, but I couldn't slow him down, you know. He, he wanted to work all the time and cover the whole world, it seemed like, uh, in these little old Grand Rapids. But he later became, a, he became an editor of a paper down in southern Michigan, and uh, he, he, he was a fine reporter. In those days, of course, it, it was quite different, really. Uh, there was no such thing as television, and, and, and radio wasn't particularly that popular, so that the newspaper w was the medium by which people got their news and wanted to know what was going on. I was thinking recently that the recent election, as a matter of fact, we worked a lot of elections, and it would take about a, a two-day stint for us to get the election proper so we could get everything right. And it was the newspaper that told people what was happening and what we did. And, 
as soon as we put it all together, and out the kids and the men would go in the streets and yell extra, and that's the way, that's the way life was. It was extra. It was extra in the sense of being new, and it was extra in the sense of living at that time of, of our life. It's, uh, it was fun. It was glamorous. It was exciting. It was dangerous. Many times there was, there was danger in the types of stories that we were covering because the gangsters were rampant. They had bank robberies and grand rapids, by which quite differently. Sometimes they came up, uh, a well-known gangster would come up and hold up a bank and maybe do a lot of shooting. And I remember when I was a, uh, before I was city editor, I was a reporter to cover the police, the police and uh, they used to take very good care of us at the police station and sometimes uh, too good a care. I remember there was a, a hold up of a, of a bank, Grand Rapids, and and the, the it so happened that the, that the department was rather short of people at that time, but it was a, a certain certain sar sergeant, and uh, he said, "Hey, kid, hop along with me." He got into his car. It was kind of a kind of a roadster car, is all it was. And I said, "Where are we going?" He said, "We're going to go, go out and get some gangster. They just held up a bank." And I said, "Well, what am I doing here?" You know, and pretty soon uh, he he ran. Uh, Ran every red light and everything, and we 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 caught up with the gang, you know. The next thing I know, I'm I'm looking at what am I doing here? You know, <laughs> these guys, they, uh, they had good once in a while. The bullet would go around, and my Lord, get me out of here! And <laughs> I uh, and finally, I don't. I said, Well, what are you going to do if you catch him? You haven't got anything here. No, but he said, We'll track him down. We'll keep roll radio ahead. He said, We'll get some police department up ahead of us. And I, um, I thought, oh boy, this is this is the end of my time, that's for sure. And next thing I know, I'm looking around and they got a little wooden barrel about this, about that size, and they opened up the uh, the side window in their car and they started pouring out. And it was it was roof tacks, these roof tacks. Of course, they're throwing them on the road. Next thing I know, our cars go because. The tires were all blown out. That's the best accident I had, the close to accident I ever did see. And I'm so glad to have been a part of it because we couldn't go any further, you know. <laughs> but these, these were little things that was almost daily in the life of a, of a newspaper at that time. Well, you know, since we are going back a little bit now in the 30s, uh, <coughs> tell, tell, tell me when you first met Grace. Grace was a, was a nurse at the hospital at the time that I was covering the hospital at that, that time, the hospital in Grand Rapids. And she was a nurse at uh, St. Mary's Hospital, and I met her there, and uh, so it is. She turned out to be a pretty good wife. Uh, so uh, I married her there uh, in Grand Rapids, and she had been a nurse at that hospital. So. Uh, which hospital? St. Mary's. Say that was at St. Mary's. Yeah, it was St. Mary's Hospital. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And did you uh, did you meet when you were out both working? You met. Yes. Due to your jobs. Yes, right. We were both working. Yeah. So it was a, it was a, a nursing romance, so to speak. One of the stories you told me too, which I think is just very revealing of who you are, Ralph, is when you drove up to Grace's family's house one day and you saw her mom. That was before we were married, yeah. Would you tell that story, please? Well, I got up there. Grace's parents had a farm, a sizable farm. And of course, in those days, they didn't, uh, electricity hadn't gotten to a lot of places yet, actually. And here I found her mother was, <clears throat> was out in the, uh, back area of their farm up there and she was washing clothes in there and, uh, and washing them in a tub by an old washing board, hanging them up and she was doing it because the helpers had come in at the farm the crops were in and she was doing all that washing and hanging them up and I, I couldn't believe such a thing to see it, you know. So I, um, I, I just, Thought it was a horrible thing, so I went back, back to my office, and I got a hold of. Um, I knew that uh, I knew that Sears and Roebuck uh, had made uh, washing machines that had gasoline engines on them, 
a little more gasoline motor, you know. So I called down there, they had them, and so I, uh, I ordered up a washing machine with, with the gasoline engine on it, and uh, so that they could have a washer and a dryer and everything else. And they, I sent it, I had it delivered up there to them. I thought that was, that was too much for me to see, you know. I couldn't stand that. So, of course, after a while, electricity came in, they put an engine on it to make it work more. And uh, not only was uh, was interesting to see, but uh, the farmers from nearby suddenly became very good friends with everybody. The machine was working seven days a week, I think, up in that area. 